Maybe you could start with when the sh your shop first opened um, to the 90s craze, 80s, 90s craze, rise of eBay, which is a little bit later than that, late 90s, early 2000s, COVID, and then maybe even opening just this amazing new shop that we're going to, um, I would love to hear about um, that you're building. Uh, yeah, um, it's kind of funny. Open the store April 1st, not kidding, uh, 1989. <laughs> I was 22 years old. And it was a coin and stamp shop that I'd worked for 10 years prior, actually started delivering coin, actually started delivering flyers um, for this coin and stamp shop at 12. So took over the business in 1989, had some help from my parents. My mom worked with me for 18 years until she passed. And my father's been with me for almost the past 30 years um, working with me and, uh, couldn't be here without him for sure. Um, but yeah, it seems like a lifetime ago and it was so different. We were dealing in 50 cent packs of Topps, Fleer and Donruss. And then you think the big news of 1989 is, oh my God, we're going to double the price of packs as Upper Deck came out with a dollar pack. And there was a lot of outrage. People were like, whoa, and boxes were 30 bucks. And that was a a big deal back then literally the doubling of a price of cards um was kind of just out there at the time and um owning that shop through the 90s was wild as we had that prolifer prolifer easy for me to say proliferation of products that came out and it went from tops fleer donruss to bringing on upper deck and then you get leaf and you got pacific and you got playoff and you got collector's edge and they all have so many different variants of product um, that it came almost impossible to keep track of things. And um, it was good in a lot of ways, but it was also a rough decade. Um, you, you know, you dealt with, you know, player strikes, which were something that it really kind of hurt the industry. And just that proliferation drove a lot of people out because it became too expensive or too complicated to collect cards. But with all that being said, it was a glorious decade as well as it brought about incredible innovation with having all these different manufacturers that wanted to stand out in the crowd. And it brought apart, brought about game used cards and brought about autographs being a regular component in products and serial numbering. And it all began in the nineties. And then you saw a proliferation, that word again, <laughs> proliferation of card shops coming in and, where you used to have, you know, one or two in your area, you might have had five to 20 card shops in your area, which was a good thing because I believe card shops are billboards for the industry. So it gave a lot of um, presence to the hobby, but it also kind of brought about a bunch of people that were only in it for the money. And those that were only in it for the money didn't seem to last that long, but those that were in it for the long term and building hobby and building a place where people wanted to go put their hands on cards and enjoy things, many of those shops are here till this day. Um, so the 90s was wild. Um, wouldn't change it for anything. I grew up in the hobby, basically in the 90s. I was mostly in my 20s, early 30s. And um it taught me a lot of things. And by the end of the 90s, we had technology, we had databases, we had eBay, we had ways to sell things online. So it went from a very simple 89 upper deck becomes a buck to all of a sudden having online databases and having products that are hundreds and hundreds of dollars and the innovation that went along with it.